Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, we're just going to get started here today. Uh, my name is Matthew Butler. Um, I am not the pastor at this church. Uh, pastor Matt Golseth is sick today, and as of yesterday, I learned that. And so today is going to be a little bit impromptu, but also, conveniently, it is also University Sunday. So uh, University Sunday is when the college students at this church help lead and put on the service. Uh, so we have plenty of musicians. Uh, Thomas will be preaching for us today. And uh, although I guess I'm, I'm a recent college graduate, I'll be doing the liturgy. So that, that was convenient. Um, we welcome you all this morning. And uh, I hear it's parents weekend. Uh, so we're glad to have you here at uh, Concordia. Uh, one thing that might help you uh, if you're new to this church is that you can download a bulletin from online uh, from the website. Um, most everything should be in the LSB, uh, I think. If not, we'll just run with it. Um, and uh, if you're new here and you would like to get connected in this church, uh, please fill out a connection card. Those are online. Or you can talk to basically anybody here at this church, and uh, they will help you get connected. Um, so with that, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, we're, we're going to stand and sing our opening hymn, uh, Lift High the Cross.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our name, or sorry, our help is in the name of the Lord, who who made made heaven heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now sing the Kyrie. Let's pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, 
through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I think I forgot to see you guys. Uh, we continue with the readings. First reading comes from Acts chapter 4, 32 to 35. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. I'll read our psalm for us today. It's from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he is commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. The epistle comes from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to it, and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world, of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, everybody. I'm Daria, for those of you who don't know me. How is everybody doing today? Good. You're good? All right, I need a volunteer. Is someone, someone who's really fast at drawing something? Who's the really fast drawer? 
maybe someone that's like maybe seven or older. <laughs> you want to do it for me? What's your name? Lucas, can you come up here? All right. I'm going to give you this clipboard, and you're going to draw a flower for me in 10 seconds, OK? You have 10 seconds. Can everybody count down? Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Thank you. OK. All right. Let's pretend that we don't know that Lucas drew this flower. OK. Look at my flower, everyone. Look at this amazing flower that I drew. Look how it has pink leaves and, I mean, pink petals and a green stem. Aren't I so, so good at drawing? Am I so good at drawing? Good. Aren't I awesome? <laughs> What's wrong with that? What did I say wrong? <laughs> did I really draw this flower? No. no. Who drew the flower? So should I be saying that I drew the flower, and should I be getting all the praise for the flower? No. no who should be getting the praise for drawing the flower? Lucas. Lucas should, right? So who knows who made us? Who made us? God did. So um, God gave us lots of special gifts and blessings. Like, what did God give us? Who thinks of a blessing that God gave us? Yes? Life. Yes, God gave us life. Anything else? What? <laughs> Can you think of anything God gave you? What? Family? Oh, flowers? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, God forgave all our sins, huh? So God gave us lots of special gifts, and we should remember that everything that we have is something that God gave to us. So we should always give God credit for all the amazing things he has done and give him the glory, right? The Bible says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for creating us. Help us to give you glory and praise you every day. Amen.
Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, that you may and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it on my side. Do not just believe, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but they are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may be, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Grace to you, O Christ. We confess our belief. I believe in one God.
<clears throat> Morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, or only know me as that one cowboy and or Navy guy, uh, my name is Thomas Hine, and it's truly such a privilege to be up here this morning. This is my fourth year at Wazoo, and my third as part of our campus ministries group here at Concordia. And let me just start by saying I could not have asked for a more welcoming church family. You're all wonderful, and I think I speak for all the college students when I say that we're eternally grateful to all of you for opening your homes to us, cooking us good food, and in general just sharing in the word and the love of God. Having this home away from home is truly a blessing, and we appreciate it more than you know, so thank you. I'll also preface this with Pastor Matt went to seminary and does this all the time, so bear with me. Something I've always been taught is the value of hard work. I've been told before that sometimes I can epitomize my grandpa, of whom it's often said, if there's a harder way to do it, Jake will find it. And sometimes when working with him, he's even informed me, Tom, you're working too hard. We all work hard, whether it's in school or at your job, as a parent, as a grandparent, as a mentor, or in some other sphere of life. But why do we do it? What makes us work hard and why should we want to? I'll shout out Matt Butler for turning me on to Dietrich Bonhoeffer's The Cost of Discipleship. And Matt can explain it a whole lot better than I can. But one of Bonhoeffer's arguments is that we should be pursuing costly grace as opposed to cheap grace. The important distinction being that costly grace costs us something. It costs God the life of his only son, Jesus, and in order to truly be disciples, it costs us something too. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus says, For whosoever would save his life will lose it, and whosoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. Costly grace comes from giving up one's life to follow Jesus in order that we may have eternal life through him. Jesus died on the cross that we may be saved, and his enormous sacrifice and subsequent resurrection is what grants us salvation. What's more, as we can especially appreciate on this first Sunday after Easter, is that as soon as he arose, he continued working, and he sent the disciples out to evangelize to all the nations, something that must certainly have been hard, considering that the crowd had just elected to have Jesus put to death. However, of utmost importance is that their salvation came not out of the success of their evangelism, and ours not as a result of our works, but by the grace of God alone through the work of the cross. So why should we work hard? One of our discussions over Bonhoeffer's book brought up the idea that we need not work hard to prove our faith or to gain the love of God, but that we work hard because we are faithful. Work is a result of faith. This becomes a bit of a slippery slope because Bonhoeffer's costly grace implores us to do something outside of ourselves as disciples in Christ, without the sum of our works or any individual work in any way leading to salvation. Our works do not save us, and they do not bolster our faith. They are merely evidence of it, not in a sense that we can say, I work, so I must be faithful, but rather, I am faithful, so I work. But why should we work hard? Well, everyone is given talents and spiritual gifts. Epictetus, the famous Stoic, says that life is a play, and to play well the part you were given it is another's duty to choose what that part is. In the parable of the talents, we learn that to those whom much has been given, much, has been, much is expected. This is all to say that in working hard, we give glory to God who made all things. We should work hard to please God at whatever station he has put, it at, put us at in life because he has given us the opportunity and the ability and the marvelous latitude to do so. God is and should be the root of all. If you find yourself lacking in motivation, look first to your faith and not the immediate result of the work itself. Psalm 148 tells us all peoples to praise the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. Our works do not gain us favor. They do not win us laud. Ultimately, our work is not for us. It is for God alone. This is not to say you can't take pride in your work or feel satisfaction after accomplishing a task or a goal. And I know I certainly appreciate the culmination of a project. But keep in mind always that everything we do should glorify God. So then, in Acts chapter 4, what do we learn that the believers did? They gave up what they had to give to the needy so that no one was left wanting. These believers put themselves through this hardship voluntarily because it gave glory to God. This was their part, what their ability was, and so they did it. 
I think about in a very literal sense our very own Tuesday night dinners or our college student church holidays. And so often you wonderful people take it upon yourselves to give to us college students, often away from home and family, even if it's not that far, that which you have, all for the sake of sharing the love of God. And I encourage you, us, we, the college students, and anyone on the receiving end of such blessings to look for every opportunity we can to give back and to pay it forward. So let us all work hard in all that we do to the glory of God. And when the opportunity arises, give yourself wholly to others for the sake of Christ alone. I just learned that none of you can hear me through my microphone, so I'll just talk through the lectern. Okay. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, we continue with the prayers of the church, um, and especially, let me open up the back of my service here. We especially pray prayers of thanks for Kylan Robinson, who is celebrating his birthday this week. Um, and then we pray for the comfort and healing of those in the church and those around the church. For all who suffer, suffer from mental health concerns, prayers for comfort and understanding for all those who are battling cancer, healing for Jim Steck as he continues chemo, for Kristen Robinson as she battles cancer, healing for Phil Seitz, hand and back issues, healing for Inez, for Ruby Papendick as she is on hospice, healing for John and Audrey Ayers who are sick, for Kristen as she undergoes surgery April 18th, and for Brenda Schroeder as she mourns the death of her cousin. We pray especially for all those who are traveling, for all who served in the armed forces and for their families, for the unemployed and underemployed that God will provide, and for all affected by the Israel conflict. So let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole Christian church that the peace of God dwell upon it and that the Spirit of God work through it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for the nations of the world and for the men and women entrusted with their leadership, that true and lasting tranquility be known around the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for this congregation that all of its members dwell together in unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for those who actively keep the peace both locally and around the world, including the armed forces of our nation and our local policemen and women. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for those whose lives are in need of special measure of peace and comfort the sick and the hospitalized, and all those who are experiencing changes and challenges, including the unemployed, those who are relocating to new situations, and the elderly, as they face each new day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. For all the saints now to your eternal presence, Lord, we give thanks. We give you thanks. Grant that we be blessed by the heritage of faith that they have left, left uh, to us in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. Amen. We now proceed with the offering.
All right, we're going to share the peace. There will be no communion today, uh, so it's going to be a short service. So let's share the peace. All right, everybody, that's enough fun. (laughs) Uh, I will invite you all to stand just for this last part of the service. We're almost done here, but we're going to do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, I'm going to have to read from it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and may he give you peace. Amen. All right, with that, we're going to sing our closing hymn and then we'll just have a few announcements after and then that will be, that will be it.
You can all be seated. <laughs> um, we will just have a few announcements today. And I would just like to say thank you, everybody, today for carrying the service with your voices. I actually really couldn't tell if I, my mic was on, but it doesn't matter because you guys, you guys are the instrument of the church. So um, with that, if you are a college student and you would like to join us after for lunch, please come down and meet us in the basement below. Um, yeah, thank you. Good morning. Um, I have a couple things. Um, last month, several of us in the church kind of put all our crafts together and did a little craft fair at the Pullman Senior Center. And as a result of that, we've been invited to do it again. <laughs> um, Bishop Place will be having an open house um, May 18th to, they've been doing some work in there, and they will have a little craft fair. So if anyone has something they make or some little crafty thing they'd like to have us take to that or come with us, um, we would love to have a few things out there. Um, they're not charging us anything for a table or anything, so whatever money we make is yours to keep or donate or whatever you wish to do with that. So um, that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, my other announcement is next week on Sunday evening, we will be playing Bunko. So if you want to just come next week, um, it'll be at 5 o'clock, so we'll probably have some pizza. You can bring a snack to share. And we'll be playing in the basement. Good morning. My name's Amber King. I'm our preschool director. I have a few announcements. Um, the first one is our art show is coming up. It's not this Thursday, but next Thursday, um, April 18th. It goes from about 5.30 until about 7.00. Um, and we love to have congregational uh, volunteers. So if any of you are free that night and you're interested in helping, um, we would love to have you get to see some really cute kids art and help some really cute preschoolers with art projects. Um, we also will need friends to help set up that day and then clean up possibly that night or the next day. So if you're available those times too, please just email me at amber at Concordia. Pullman.org, um, and we'd love to get you um, plugged in there. The next thing is um, Concordia is hosting two summer camps this summer for kids in kindergarten through third grade. It's kind of a come back to preschool week if you would, um, your kiddo would enjoy that, but you don't have to have attended Concordia Lutheran Preschool to come and enjoy. Um, we have art camp and then creepy crawly camp. They're just super fun weeks of enrichment. So if you have a kiddo or you know a kiddo that would enjoy that, just shoot me an email and I'll give you the link to um, sign up online for that. Now I have a couple announcements that are not preschool related. Let's do, oh, uh, Pastor Matt wanted me to let you all know there is a funeral for Wa Robert Warner this Thursday at, I don't know how to pronounce that, Corbel Funeral Home. Um, so please just see that information if you would like to attend. And then the last uh, announcement I have is for Luther Haven. We are looking to compile some pictures of our kiddos and all that they have enjoyed at the Luther Haven summer camp. So if you would like or if you have some pictures you want to um, put in, just reach out to Emily Lane Weiber. And then um, we can have those by Friday, April 12th, which is, which is this Friday. So thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I also have a few announcements. So first off is our Campus Ministries meal is this Tuesday at 6. And this time, Matt and Angela, or not Matt and Angela. <laughs> Gary and Angela are cooking, and Matt is leading the devotion, and we would love to see you. And then my second announcement is something new. Um, I am trying to host a bridal shower for the bride-to-be, Daylin, on, oh good, it is there. Angela made this beautiful graphic 
on April 27th for all the ladies who would like to come shower some blessings on her. I could use some help though if you're interested in like bringing food or getting a decoration. That would be super appreciated. So my number is up there, but you can grab me, email me, whatever is easiest. So April 27th from 10 to 12, it's kind of an open house, but I'd love to see, and Daylin, I'm sure would love to see any of you there. And that's all I have. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Rod Geigley, your congregational president. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Matt. You did a great job. And the college students, fantastic. <laughs> they put on a great service. Um, just to give you a reminder, we have a council meeting this uh, Thursday at 7. And uh, we're going to be pretty busy. Our... Um, our new year starts July 1st for a church year. So we're, we've got budget meetings, we've got a few things. So um, we'll be meeting more than just this third. We'll meet again next month. And then uh, probably end of May, we'll probably have a congregational um, voters meeting to vote and approve the new budget that we're trying to put together. Um, Sean Lee. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and any, anybody's invited to these meetings, so just uh, be aware of that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so, yeah, I mean, keep the uh, lay ministry board and the congregation uh, council in your prayers so we can work through this and put this together. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, please go have a good Sunday, uh, work hard, um, and we'll see you next week. All right, thanks.